Thank y'all so much. Merci beaucoup. How y'all doing tonight? Doing all right? What a beautiful series. We're so um, honored to be a part of this series and play for y'all. And we always love coming to New Orleans. We uh, made a weekend of it. We've been here since last night and just enjoying your beautiful city. Um, we're going to show you a little bit about each song as we go along and um, introduce the group. Um, AJ, so... Uh, beautifully talked about different things about my dad and as I was every morning I write in my little journal I was this morning having my little coffee on the balcony writing in my journal and I'm writing the date and I'm like oh I think it's daddy's anniversary today that he passed away 31 years and um having the tomorrow's father's day just kind of everything kind of was lining up but anyway we're, we're glad to to be here and play for y'all we're going to do a two-step it's called the Texas two-step and um yeah it's a good little dance number Lakshaw. Yeah, Lakshaw, yeah. or some people call it the Lake Charles two step. Lakshaw. Different names. Yeah. Two step the Lakshaw. Thank you so much. Thank you, dancers. We love that so much. Thank y'all. So, um, yeah, we, you know, Cajun music and music just in Louisiana in general, in the New Orleans area, we're so rich. Our families are so rich. Like, so, so many of us have music, and sometimes we realize how blessed we are, and sometimes we don't. 
Um, but I think everybody on this stage realizes the, the beauty of having music in our families because we all have a connection to our families with this music. We love it, but it's also somehow connecting us to our families. So um, I love that so much. You know, I heard a little bit about my connection, but everybody up here has a, a really beautiful story. And um, I like for Jean-Jacques, he's gonna sing the next song. And um, he learned um, this song from his grandpa, Cyprien and Adon Landerneau. They actually went to the Newport Folk Festival in, what year was that? Jean-Jacques, remember when they went? Uh, I think it might have been the year after your dad. Year or, after, yeah. but they were from the Mamou area. Yes. But um, just some really awesome, awesome musicians. And um, this is one of their songs. You want to tell them a little bit about? So this, this song is La Valse de Perignon. And uh, it's, uh, it's about a guy who's he's taken his, uh, his buggy and his horse. It's during Prohibition. And uh, he's traveling not too far, but like, you know, maybe 10 miles, but he's leaving his family, his wife and his kids because he's got to go get some more whiskey. So uh, he's lamenting and, and feeling guilty for taking the carriage ride. So <laughs> La Fosse de Prairie Ron, here we go. But he still went. <laughs> he still went and it was worth it. <laughs> Also, uh, this is a, a bit of a unique style um, that is, is different. Um, it, the accordion and the, and the fiddle is, is unison, so like playing together. Um, the modern dance hall stuff is, you know, it's all taking turns. And, and so I really like this anyway. It's old school, so here we go.
Thank you so much. I just love the beauty and the simplicity of that, that, that type of uh, old Cajun sound. We're going to get Blake to sing one for y'all. And uh, tell me a little bit about this, Blake. Blake Miller is um, a very sought-after musician, and we're so glad that he plays with Paul Fa Toujours. Um, he plays fiddle, accordion, bass, anything you want. He, and you might hear him on KRVS, if you ever listen to KRVS. He does an awesome show. I love listening to him, uh, La Lou du Box. And um, his grandpa made, uh, made accordions back in the day, Tikajan accordions. And so he grew up hearing a lot of great Cajun music. And uh, just looking at some pictures of him earlier, we were having dinner um, earlier. And, um, you know, it kind of makes you feel old whenever you see somebody on your stage that has gray in their beard and you've been knowing them since, since they were like that old. But that's all right, Blake. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to hold that against you, but I've been knowing Blake for a long, long time. He still has that little baby face underneath that beard, but um, <laughs> tell him about the little song you're going to sing, Blake. That little song I'm going to sing is called Titi de la Compagne. It's a little girl from the country. It's about a guy go and find his little girl from the country and he's gonna take her back to the city and marry her and make her love him forever. <laughs>
Kelly, huh? Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. We're going to do a, um, a beautiful waltz uh, that we love so much from um, Mr. Lawrence Walker. Mr. Lawrence Walker wrote uh, a lot of great, great tunes that become Cajun classics. Um, and you probably learn a lot of, hear a lot of his songs if you um, listen to Cajun music a lot. And this is one of uh, our favorites, and it's called Métisia Noir, which means my pretty little dark eyes. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we'll get Jean-Jacques to sing another one. I love this one so much. It's called Les Blues de Soula. Drunkard's Blues. Yes. The best lists never make it through the night. <laughs> they, gotta be, they have to be changed. The first thing is I'm skipping around the list, but that's all right. <laughs>
doing out there? I'm doing good? Oui. Yeah, we're having fun. So uh, we're going to do a, a little song for y'all, something called um, which means you had some, but you're not getting any more. <laughs> okay, uh -uh. We, we, we keep it clean, y'all. We, we're talking about some potatoes and some gratons. I don't know what you're talking about. But that's what they say in the song. You had some little patates and some gratons. You had some, but you're not getting no more. I don't know. Maybe they didn't appreciate the potatoes and gratons. I don't know. <laughs> but they're not getting no more.
Gonna play for y'all is uh, called Bonsoir Moto, and um, <clears throat> we learned it from I learned it for sure from um, some uh, dear friends of mine, Mr. Kenry Fontenot and Mr. Boisek Ardouin. Uh, they were some amazing musicians. Mr. Kenry was from uh, Welsh, Louisiana, and um, he was a, um, a, a Creole fiddle player, and he played many many years with uh, Mr. Boisek Ardouin, and. Um, you know, now we call it like Creole, Zotico, or Cajun. Like we have like these different definitions for everything. But when I was really young, I just heard it called French music. It was like American, it was like French music. You know, we played French music. It wasn't like Cajun music or whatever, because it was just in French. And um, I'm gonna tell you all a little story. I have um, three older sisters and one, one, my oldest sister is 20, about 20 years older than me. And um, she thought, a long time ago, the radio, FM meant French music and AM meant American music. <laughs> so it was like, you know, we had our French music on a FM and AM, like she didn't know, you know, we come from a little small town, so that's what she thought. <laughs> so it wasn't Cajun Creoles, but we fantastic. just all kind of played French music, right? <laughs> but we'd hang out with, you know, black, white, everybody. It's just, it's interesting to me that they think, you know, we're so racist down here. And you know, there are a lot of, we have a lot of work to do, I know that, but people hung out together, you know, like within the Cajun and Creole language for sure, like there's a lot of people that, you know, like are, you know, African Americans that live in a certain area and they speak the French that is spoken in that area. It doesn't matter what race they were from. So like Boisek, Ardouin, who was from the Dural area, he spoke more of a Cajun French, right? And Shane, my husband, who's from the Cecilia area, speaks more of a Creole French. And it just depends on who your neighbors were, right? Because everybody was hanging out together. So it's not a matter of like your race, it's a matter of who were your neighbors, right? So you hung out with your neighbors. So I just think that's very interesting to me. I'm interested in that because, um, anyway, I don't know why I got on that soapbox. <laughs> we were talking over coffee this morning and um, I told her how uh, my grandpa, who inspired me to play music, actually learned from Wasek Arguin's family. I, I don't remember the, the rel it wasn't Wasek, but a relative. One of his so, uncles, I think you yeah. had said, right? Um, so they were, they were farmers, they, 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 you know, they were hardworking people and they all lived together and they just learned from each other. So just to. Yeah, to reiterate that. that yeah. yeah, anyway, so this is a song that's very dear to me. They were very, very awesome. Um, influential people for, for me, and I know a lot of people in, in, in our group. And this is a, a beautiful song that um, is called Bonsoir Moto.
Take time. Thank you so much. Let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, we're going to do um, a few songs that um, we learned from my dad and my uncles. My dad, um, like AJ was saying earlier, my dad was Dewey Balfa. And um, before I was born, he um, had gone out to the Newport Folk Festival, and it basically changed his life. Um, and after that, he was on a, he was on a mission. And, um, you know, in... For many, many, many years, we were taught to, um, I guess because they wanted to become, everybody to become Americanized, and I understand that, but the way they did it is they made people be ashamed of being different, right? So you, it wasn't something that you were taught to be proud of. Like if you had something that was different than the mainstream America, you were taught to be ashamed of that. And, um, and I know a lot of subcultures within, not only the United States, all over the world, um, suffered that. And um, the Cajuns certainly did. And um, after, you know, Daddy went back over there, he went over there, he came back home, and he's, and I don't know that I would have the courage when newspapers were saying, you know, they're going up there, they're gonna, they're probably doing this as a joke to make fun of y'all, you know, like to make fun of us. And, um, but they went, they didn't care. My dad had never seen more than 200 people in a room. And they played it on a festival stage, and after their first song, 17,000 people stood up and, like, where they were freaking out. They were like, what is this? You know, like, what is this music? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. They're like, we have this in our country. You know, we have this, and these men are speaking French. And it was just like, wow. They were, like, fascinated by it. And um, so Daddy came back home, and, and so my whole life I heard that, you know, you're proud to, you know, be proud of who you are, and not so much pride, it's not, pride is probably not the word I would like to use, it's just like be, you know, be respectful, I guess, be respectful of your roots, and I think the more we are respectful and know our roots, the more respect we can pay to other people, right, so like, if you don't understand that, and you just like want to be mainstream, then anybody that's different than you, you judge them, and you question that, right, but if you have an understanding and a respect for your roots, I think you're more likely to understand and respect people that have other cultures. So I think for me, as I get older, I realize that that's more the bigger picture of the message. I'm also a music, uh, uh, elementary music teacher, and I just, you know, I teach, want to teach my children, my students, <laughs> you know, just to learn about who they are, because I think the more you learn about yourself, the more you are respectful to other people. Anyway, yeah, and I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm grateful that, that um, I grew up and my dad taught me that. And I'm thinking a lot about him tonight. Yeah. He was an awesome man. He wasn't perfect by any means, but he, was a, is a very, he had very good intentions. <laughs> and um, he was a good person. But anyway, some uh, songs he played with his brothers. It's, um, yeah, they're from a little town called Mamu. This is called Tigalo Amamu. That's where your people were from too, huh, Jean-Jacques? Good on Mamu, that's right. Good on Mamu. <laughs> that's right. Good on the Rao. <laughs>
Do a little song and it's um, kind of a haunting song. It's called a, it's called the, it's my family waltz. It's called the Balfour Waltz, and it's a, it's a love story. And just to kind of tell you how uh, sad it is, it says, um, if I, the last one of the, one of the verses says, if I only had five days left in my life, I'd give up three of those five to spend the last two with you. I just want to die in your arms. So, just a little lighthearted family <laughs> song. <laughs> oh dear. It's warm up here, and our um, their wives were supposed to bring us some drinks, and they they fired because where y'all at, girls? <laughs> Rowdy and <laughs> that's all right. Okay, it's just warm. it's just warm. <laughs> Alpha Waltz.
Great meal on the fiddle, y'all. Amelia, y'all, oh, y'all doing good, girls. <laughs> How about a hand for Amelia and Roddy, y'all? Keeping the van hydrated. <laughs> or dehydrated or hydrated, I don't know. <laughs> Thank y'all. All right. How about a hand for Blake Miller on the fiddle, y'all? I always think of my, um, my Uncle Rodney. He used to love this song. He uh, played guitar with the Bullfight Brothers, and he was such a fine musician. He, he probably played fiddle way better than my dad, but Daddy said, I need you on guitar, so play guitar for me. But he, he, <laughs> um, he uh, also played accordion. He was just a, a very, very shy, but just a, a phenomenal musician. But I always think of him because he loved this song so much. And um, a lot of uh, traditional songs, like we have a lot of old, old songs that go back hundreds of years, but also we just kind of adapt and adopt songs that we might hear on the radio. And I grew up not knowing that this was one of those songs that we had stole from somebody else. I thought it was a Cajun tune. But then I started hearing, um, keep it knocking, but you can't come in. And I said, oh, oh, okay, I recognize that. I recognize the words and I recognize the melody. I thought it was a Cajun song. So but this is the way um, I grew up hearing it. Tu peux croire, mais tu peux pas rentrer.
Why? Yeah. I think it's time for a little team drink. What y'all think? Yeah, cheers, y'all. Team drink. Cheers to y'all. May y'all be healthy and happy. Yeah. Pull pop, mon papa. Yeah, me too. <laughs> had envie to do some original look, original tunes and come back to that. Okay. Je veux. So we, we love to play old songs that we learn from our, our mentors and people that we admire so much. But another thing I learned from my dad, and I think it's really awesome that you, you, know, you need to create your own songs. You need to tell you stories about your life and what's going on. So we're going to do some, well, we're going to do one right now, an original uh, tune. Um, I think the Whiskey River uh, one. That was a great, a great club. A lot of songs are written about great uh, places where you go play music, and this was definitely one for us. We used to, I used to love to go there to hear music, but also just to, to play. Every Sunday afternoon, they had dances. It's on the levee in the Atchafalaya Ch Basin, and um, and every Sunday they had dances from four to eight in the afternoon. It was wild. It was so fun. It was like people had so much fun. You just couldn't. When you got there, you could just let your hair down and have fun. And um, a lot of great people. And um, so we wrote a song about that. And um, unfortunately, the place is no longer. It, it closed down, and then about a year ago, was it about a year ago? It burnt down. Six months, S right? Six months ago, yeah. yeah. Anyway, if you ever had the chance to, to go there, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, it was um, Whiskey River. They had great boat tours there, but they had just some awesome dances. So this is a song we wrote about that. I told Christine a few months ago, I said, you know, a lot of Cajun songs are about old dance halls, and like, you know, you grow up playing the music, and, and you know, it's the whatever special, it's the wagon wheel special, it's the this special. And I told her, I said, y'all wrote this song 20 years ago, 23 years ago. We must be getting old because now we are joining the club of the old dance halls that are no longer existing, and we're playing a song. <laughs> Playing a song that's, yeah, so anyway, here we go. I just want to tell you a little bit about the words because it's so fun. It's a fun place. We'd go there, and like I said, it was four to eight. And so um, my, my former husband and I, Dirk, Dirk used to play accordion. He was a, a founder of the group. And we'd go there, and we became really good friends with Terry and Martha, who owned the place. And so we'd play from four to eight. And then, of course, after we'd play, we'd go at the bar, and we'd have a few drinks with them, you know, just to chill afterwards. And um a lot of times it's like we finished and it's like, it was like in Monday morning. <laughs> it's like, whoa, like, I can't do that no more, but I was very young. <laughs> but anyway, we talk about that in there. Yep. <laughs>
Yeah, this year is special. Ooh, we actually recorded a, a live CD out there at Balfour Two Shores. Our latest recording is kind of old, but anyway, we recorded a CD, CD out there. We loved it so much. Um, Blake, you feel like singing uh, Les Trois de Mapoke? Okay? Me? Yeah. Yeah? Tell me. That's what I came here for. <laughs> Do something over there, man. <laughs> this is a song that was originally done by uh, Doris Mott and the Lake Charles Ramblers. We're gonna say, but I learned it from uh, Christine's uncle Rodney singing it with Nathan Abshire and the Baffle Brothers with the Pine Grove Boys. It's called Le Trasta Mombogue. This is a great, it's a very unique song. Uh, it's got a really good story. It's about a guy who everything was going fine and well. He was going out to the dance, he was hanging out with all his friends, and then his wife followed the tracks of his buggy and found him cheating on her. And it wasn't his fault, nor the girl that he was with, but the blame was all laid on the tracks of the buggy. So he sold the buggy and the horse, just to be sure. <laughs> Life story. Can't speak it. Ça va vite quand tu passes un bon temps.
Man, time is flying by. We, we don't, we, yeah, we have a lot of songs we want to do. <laughs> we don't have enough time. So I'm trying to look at the list, figuring out which ones we want to do for y'all. I think we got time to do about four more for 15 minutes. My guitar is so out of tune. Um, I'd like to do some originals, I think, to finish out the show. Um, and uh, there's two that uh, I like when Blake sings. There's two of them that are kind of bluesy ones that we wrote, and so he's gonna have to choose. You can either sing J'ai perdu mes lunettes, which means I lost my glasses, or Les Traga de Tad, Beaufort. Traga. Okay. That's an easy choice. Okay, my cousin Todd Beaufort, um, double first cousin. Our mamas were sisters, and our daddies were brothers. So every weekend, wherever, whatever family we were hanging out with, there, I was with my cousin, so we, he's like closest to being a brother. But uh, he came with us to, well, actually to Jazz Fest one time. He came, we played, Wolf well, Toujours played at Jazz Fest, and he had a lot of fun. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> kind of, you know, cutting up. And uh, Monday morning came, and uh, he called his boss and said, man, I am not feeling good. And the boss was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't be feeling so good either, you know. And then it just, like, we sort of, like, took it from there and, like, things got worse. He, you know, he went knock. Oh, this is a true story, too. These two, the first couple of verses are based on a true story. When he was gone, he thought he was kind of courting this young girl. Like, he was kind of, you know, thought he had, like, a little, it was his good girlfriend, you know. He was going to hang out with her. And he knocked on the door, and her brother opened the door. He said, yeah, I came to see, you know, Melissa. He goes, oh, but she left with her boyfriend? <laughs> It was just like things, just like things like that just kept happening to Todd. And, yeah, and it, so it's called Todd Wolfa's Troubles, Le Tracat de Todd. But I don't know, Blake loves to sing this. I don't know why. You're going to see why, don't worry. Oh, okay, I'm going to take a little minute here to introduce the band. On the back over there, we got Mr. Jimmy Bro on the drums. Yeah. We have a lot of really good accordion players on this stage, but Jimmy's probably the best one, so we put him on the drums. <laughs> on the bass guitar, that's uh, Mr. Christine Bulfa. That's Shane Gidry, y'all, from Cecilia Louisiana. This is after I was thinking when I was going to introduce him, and it's the first time we got, we've been together for almost 10 years, but we just got married about a month ago. And so, my husband. Oh, wow, no. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but I'm, I'm happy to have him as my husband. He's a good person, and he's kind of cute to look at, too. <laughs> Calm down, y'all. He's taken, okay? <laughs> well, y'all can look and enjoy, man. On the accordion, this is Mr. Jean-Jacques O'Quinn. I'm with you myself next. My name is Blake Miller. I'm from Iota, Louisiana. We're really proud to be here. And our fearless leader over there, she's tuning her guitar right now, and there's too many good things to say about her, so I'm gonna say something bad. Just kidding. That's Christine Bofa on the guitar. Yeah.
chagrin, jeter un morceau pour moi. So this is uh, another one that's on the Whiskey River Live uh, recording, uh, an original, it's called uh, La Chandelle est Allumée, which means the candle is lit. And um, the song basically is about, um, you know, just the, um, I don't know, it's hard for me to explain. This song for me what you is Beau Fa Toujours. Like, yeah. If I had to say look, one song explained what the band is, is like this song, because it's all about carrying on the tradition. It's all about things not going away because we're gonna keep the candle lit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Blake. The wind might come, blow us around, but we're gonna keep it lit. All right, thank you, Blake. They might try to take it, they might try to sell it, but they're not gonna change us.
you all so much. It's been such an honor for us to be part of this series. Thank you all to the Jazz and Heritage Foundation for, for inviting Balfa Tujor to, to spend the evening with you all. Thank you all so much. We're going to do one more for you all, and this is one of my favorite tunes. And I always love to end the show with this because it's so fun and so, I don't know, why I like this song so much, Jean-Jacques. Because it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> this is one from his, his grandpa, uh, Cyprien Langerneau. Cyprien um, was an awesome, uh, awesome musician. And his uh, uncle, Adam. Cyprien et Adam Langerneau, right? Yeah. Cyprien and Adam, uh, the, the Mamou Cajun band from uh, the Dural area, uh, recorded one record. Um, in the, it was in the 70s. But they, but they played music. They went to Newport. They did a lot of stuff in the 10 years before that. So. Anyway, fun song. Hope you like it. Rosalie. 